Hello and welcome to the Pet Healer Podcast. This is your host, Dr. Mitzi Vargas. And today we're going to talk about New Year's Eve and beyond. And first of all, New Year's Eve could be a very traumatic time for your pets. Uh, don't have to be just dogs or cats. Even your exotics are, you know, scared by the loud noises. There's so much wildlife that dies because of the... Um, artificial, you know, uh, fireworks and all the noises that we have at that time of the year. So it's no different that inside of your house is just very strange threats for your uh, indoor family. And if you have an outdoor dog, uh, please bring him in for New Year's Eve because, again, it can be extremely scary for them to hear all of these explosions and noises and, and people yelling and loud music. And they're not used to that. So that is the basic part that we all know or should know, common sense, right? Just to keep your pets indoors and safe, away from the windows, maybe an indoor room or a closet, prepare a nice area for them to stay, give them some um, toys, uh, peanut butter filled uh, kongs is a good idea for dogs and for kitties, you know, uh, treats that it can find and, you know, a little catnip, and for the dogs, you can do uh, some tranquilizers or anxiolytics before time, if you ahead of time. If you have uh, that problem, then consult your veterinarian to give you trazodone or alprazolam or something like that. I, and of course, if you are an integrated, natural-minded person, then we have Shen Calmer or Sensing Sang for those. Uh, days that we're having that basically it's like a storm anxiety because it's a separation anxiety you might be out of the house or is also um, a st thunderstorm phobia or anxiety because it's noise uh, noise that is causing it and so in those cases you could um, also try tranquilium and other uh, like silkin other nutraceuticals that are really calming even melatonin is very calming and benadryl could be calming for your pets i would try ahead of time we have two weeks to prepare so try try and see what the reaction is with this um little over-the-counter medications and see if that would be something that will work for your pet now when it comes to people coming into your house to say hi to the new year uh, make sure that they know not to give treats to your dogs without your permission um, just tell them that your pet has special needs please don't don't give them table scraps because unfortunately is two or three days after new year's we have an increase in pancreatitis and gastroenteritis and it's usually caused by something that ingested 48 to 72 hours prior at new year's eve and so we like to avoid all of that. And in addition to that, my advice for the new years is to kind of like spend a lot of time during the day on the 31st. Go out for a long walk with your pet. Enjoy uh, the outdoors, you know, or, or increase their exercise. If it's a cat, just get a laser light. Do a lot of exercise. Keep them awake. Then that way... When they are so busy during the day, they will be a lot tired in the afternoon and they will have that time with you in advance. And so they would have had that um, enrichment in the mind and they would be more able to face all of these challenges of the noise that starts usually around my house. It starts around 7 and it doesn't let out until 1 a.m. So that's, you know, that's a good six hours of continuous uh, explosions and noises and and people yelling and screaming and you know celebrating which is great except for our pets and so I think that it's always good to err on the side of caution and give them something to calm down even if you feel like well maybe it's just really mild anxiety because remember anxiety is something that progresses over time so this year is bad Wait until 4th of July will be worse. And then the next New Year's Eve is going to be le two levels up. And so you can compound the problem if you don't address it. So those are the things that I want you to um, remind yourself to be mindful of in the New Year's Eve 
uh, New Year's Day uh, celebrations. In addition, how about beyond those celebrations? What are you, your plans or your resolutions uh, that affect your pet for the New Year's? Well, first of all, I feel like health should be foremost for you and for your pet because you need to take care of yourself. You need to put on the oxygen mask and then help your pets. And so, of course, we can accomplish this together. You can take your pet for longer walks. So try to get one of those apps that tracks how much you're um, walking or running and make your dog uh, your best uh, buddy to go in those. So not only you and your pet are going to do aerobic exercise and uh, get all the benefit of the endorphins that are released in the runners or walker runners or walkers um, intermittent walkers high but it's really a lot of enrichment for your dogs and so you will see a more calm dog the rest of the day the night um, after they have done a long one two three even five miles walk with you and I think that you can build up to it so you can set your goal by June um, in six months I'm gonna be doing five miles a day with my pet that would be a great goal, or even three miles. Whatever you set your mind into doing, I think you can achieve it. If you have cats or exotics, you know, let's just see. We're going to, you know, set up to teach our pet one trick. The reason I say p- t- teach one trick to your bird or to your um, cats is because they're going to be a little hard to train. But that will imply that you're going to spend more quality time with them and using positive reinforcement with them for longer time. So eventually they will learn the trick, and eventually you will benefit both with being together for longer times. So making time for your pets should be in your list of resolution, and making time for walking and exercising together if you have a dog should also be in your list of resolutions. And the third one that I want you to be mindful of is making sure your pet is up to date with whatever it needs to be up to date. And the reason is, it's so easy to forget. In this time, we're so busy. And it seemed like it was six months ago, but it's actually a year and a half ago when you have done the last veterinary checkup. And what you don't realize is that it it was six months or a year and a half for you, but for your pets, for each human year, it's about four. And if it's a large breed, it's about seven. So you can imagine that if you go to the doctor every four or seven years, you can really develop a lot of things that maybe you didn't even, you were compensating so well, you didn't even show to your to the, the pet parent. And so blood work and a good physical exam once a year is my advice. If you haven't done it this year, it was a crazy year. I give you that. But 2023 could be the year that we, Keep ourselves in check. Make sure our pets are caught up to date with a checkup at the veterinarian. And if they need any shots or if they need anything else, any vaccines or any um, things like heartworm prevention in Florida is so important. And we need to make sure, especially all our friends that are coming from up north, that your pet is covered because we are relentless with the mosquitoes, the fleas, and the ticks. And so it's not the same that up, like up north where you have the freeze and they die off. We see a lot of situations right now with the ticks and the fleas and um, heartworms. They are relentless. So I hope that you learned something today. And I hope that 2023 would be a wonderful year for you and your pets and that you keep being a uh, good Uh, groupie from the pet (laughs) healer and that you can uh, if you haven't subscribed subscribe for 2023 Um, if you can do a a one big favor tell three other friends about the pet healer and if you have any questions or concerns especially for the upcoming year don't hesitate we're always ready to answer your questions thank you and we'll see you next year